of James Bill. Hope you're well, thanks for joining me. Well, it's a glorious Sunday here in North Kilworth um, and I've got loads to crack on with today. Uh, the most important job I've got to do is get my solar cables put in. So um, I was given a whole load of six mil cable. Uh, I need to measure the lengths and basically that's the easy bit. The hard bit is to feed them through the two and a bit ceiling panels so I can put them in a mushroom vent over there. Um, I don't really want to, I've got the glands to put them through the roof, but I don't really want to drill holes in the roof um, if I can avoid it. So I'm going to see if I can get them through the mushroom vent, which is the preferred option these days. Um, and then phase, basically feed them back to the electrics cupboard um, in readiness for the uh, solar panels, which, will, which I'm getting this week. Um, other than that, I need to do a bit of, bit more painting now it's on the uh, jetty here it's much easier to do some painting and other bits and pieces on the roof so I'll get on with that today um, I've got a bit more electrics to crack on with so uh, yeah loads to do my plan is to bring the solar cables in from this mushroom vent here run them on the starboard side of these lights here so what I've had to do is unpin these two ceiling panels here so I can get a bit of flex down here and then I'll put the cables in kind of through there in the mushroom vent so you won't see them at all that's the plan I can't go on from that side where that hole is because I can't really get them up through there there's not enough room up through there so um, and that ceiling panel there doesn't come down because that big cupboard's in the way and that doesn't really come out because it's a little bit glued in place. Um, so it has to be here. This is my roll of six mil solar cable. Uh, I'm just measuring it out now against the boat. Um, I'm gonna try to see if I can get it through this mushroom vent here. So one solar panel kind of towards the stern, another solar panel here and then going in through that mushroom vent there, which is kind of near the fireplace. So that's the plan. Here are my two ends of the solar cables. So I think I've just got enough length I'm just straighten them out to make sure there's no kinks in the cables. And now I'm gonna go about seeing if I can get them into the boat somehow. Before I feed the cables through, it's just important to label up the positive cable, or well, both of them really, just with a just to mark out which one's that. So that's the positive. This one there is the negative. And I've done it a few in a few spots throughout the cable. But there's a gap through there, so if I do it that way. one bit. Okay. How, that 
that's just not going to work. Another coffee lid to the rescue. Oh, I don't know if this is going to work. Well, I'm now looping it through a metre rule. I'm seeing if I can just poke it all the way through. Brilliant news. Coffee lid. Now, I want to see what I've got to do is get it on the other side of that thing there. So I'll do it from the outside. Right, good. Now they're coming through the mushroom vent. So I can attach all them back up. I didn't have to take ceiling panels down, so um, that's happy days. Um, I think I'm going to put a bit of boxing on this anyway, um, because I'm going to need some more switches and stuff, and I need, I'm going to need them higher up rather than down there. Um, so when I'm out on the deck, they're kind of easy to access, which makes it easier because uh, I can then just put these solar cables just down there into the electrics cupboard. That'll work a treat. And on the outside of the boat, they come out the mushroom vent just like that. Obviously, I'll put some proper tacks on them so keep them in place. Um, and one cable, one solar panel is going to be here, this side of the chimney, and the other one's going to be that side of the chimney. So that would be panel one feeding into panel two, which would go straight into the into there and into the charger controller. So the advantage of this is that means you don't have to drill holes in the roof because they eventually kind of give a little bit and you end up getting a few drips and leaks. This way you won't.
now I'm going to be keeping this gas locker. I can do the lid and I'm going to do it in Manchester red. Okay, that's done. And whilst I had the paint out, I gave the railings another going over and the two rails going down the roof of the boat. Before I talk you through the next job I've got to do, this has arrived. Oh cool, draft excluders. Oh sweet, they're perfect. Oh there's a note here. Yeah? From Jason. Hope these are some use on your project. Thanks for entertaining us. Loved all of your videos. Take care of yourself from Jay's channel from Jay Brodgen. Thank you very much, Jay. Cheers, pal. Yeah, they're perfect for the um slit in the gear for, for the gear lever in the deck. And they're made of aluminium, so I've got to cut that down to size. Fantastic. Cheers, pal. Right, the uh, next job is two more bits of perspex, clear perspex, to make two more wine cellars, well, beer and wine cellars, so one here and one down there. And in preparation for it, I've already managed to feed the cable through. So um, obviously they have to be illuminated. Um, and I'm going to paint the inside of these um, in like a silver or grey or something like that, just to make them shine a bit more. Um, so I need to cut these holes a bit bigger to fit the perspex, and then I need to make. I need to somehow get a cable from underneath here to co come up through into the dinette, and this will be wired in through the dinette. There'll be a switch on there as well. So um, there'll be two lights, one in there and one in there, because they're different bays. Right, jigsaw. Before I jigsaw them, what I want to do is make sure that these two wine hatches line up. Um, here is a steel girder running that way, so the only play I've got is this side here. So I just want to make sure that this edge and that new edge there do line up. And I'm putting more of it this way because there's less chance of stepping on it this way i mean it's fine to stand on it but i'd rather the kids didn't so uh yeah tuck a bit more of it in there less likely to stand there and also i position this in the center of the fireplace there <laughs>
couple of days. So there's one there. And that one there. I've kind of painted as much round as I can. So uh, if anyone was to kind of peer in, it all looks pretty red. And I might do some kind of other patterns on it or whatever. Now I've brought it to life with a bit of colour. But when I put the light in there, I'm kind of hoping that uh, it really kind of makes it shine. Because as good as this one is, okay, it's a bit boring at the moment. But with the black behind it, it doesn't really shine that much. So we'll see what this looks like. I'm going to leave here now. There's just stuff everywhere because of wet paint everywhere. So I'm going to uh, take my whiteboard and head back to London. So this is how it works out. For me to be in Berkhamsted by the kind of sometime during that week there, 11th to 17th of October, this is what has to happen. Uh, obviously the boat's not going to be fully finished by then, but these bits certainly need to be done. Uh, so this week, uh, starting tomorrow, I need to finish the battery box, put the batteries in, put the solar panels on, got to sort out the alternator with Paul, uh, got to put out, put in the engine starter so the key got to work out the best place to put that and I need to secure my hatches. I also need to work out the door as well. Uh, then the week after that um, I need to finish the deck. I've got to, well Paul's got to do a bit of an engine service and I've got to watch him. Um, I've got to finish the electrics, I've got to finish a bit of my bed. I've got to build a dinette bed because my mate Will is going to be coming with me on some of this journey. Uh, and I need to finish the shower because Will insists on having a working shower, uh, even though he knows he'll have to warm the water up on the hob. Uh, week three, therefore, my plan is to leave North Kilworth early that week. So before I leave, I've got to tidy up and everything. Um, we've got, obviously, I've got a leaving due, and then I've got to leave. And ideally, you kind of want to get to Watford Locks. The first bit of my journey is going to be, on one hand, fairly uh slow because i'm learning everything on the other hand i've got about 10 miles or something before i hit a lock so i'm going to get a bit of mileage done uh and then yeah kind of well basically it gives me two two and a bit weeks to get to berkhamstead uh and these bits are stuff that i need to buy still um before i could even think about leaving so that's on my list no doubt there's other bits and pieces but really those are essential navigation bits and pieces so there we go that's what the schedule looks like for the time being um it's important to get to berkhamstead kind of mid middle to end of october before the closures start to happen on the canals uh, i've checked with the crt website there's no closures on my route planned which is good um and in terms of timings i am kind of up against it um in terms of getting things done before i depart once I've departed, um, the journey's about 42-ish hours. Um, so it's, but because obviously now the evenings are getting, well, it's getting darker earlier, um, kind of, it's not really feasible to do a couple hours navigation after work anymore. So for me to stand a chance of getting down to Berkhamstead on time, I really need to take some time off work, um, which uh, I do have annual leave, so that's fine. Um, and my friend Will uh, is joining me for some of the journey, hopefully for the first part of it. Uh, Will's the guy that I viewed the boat with originally nearly a year ago. Um, and it'd just be, well, it'd be lovely to have the company on board. Um, and he knows about as much about narrowboat navigation as I do. Um, but it'd be good to have the company on board, but also uh, just significant, really, the fact it's him. Uh, coming down on that journey uh, would, would, would be lovely. Um, but I think, uh, yeah, some time off work would be nice because then we can enjoy the passage uh, and the voyage as opposed to kind of just trying to cane it and get the hours done and 
running back and getting a car and that whole rigmarole. Um, it is going to be a bit of a rigmarole anyway, but I'd like to at least kind of moderately enjoy it. And also, we don't know what kind of weather we're going to be getting. So um, that'll be the plan, to kind of take a few days annual leave, kind of end of September. Um, so when we start the journey, I can kind of do a few days and then maybe a weekend and after five days, get down to kind of Stoke Bruin type of area. And then I'm fairly kind of close to just go through Milton Keynes and then through kind of Leighton Buzzard and I'm into Berkhamstead. So that's the plan. So really for this uh, schedule to be kept alive, I need to be getting up to the boat as frequently as I can uh, after work every day and doing bits and pieces and ticking them off that list really. So uh, I'll see you next time. Take care. Bye bye.